In my previous video, I showed you how to configure the Ductile Manuform Cableart using the QNK Configurator web page. Today, I'm going to show you how to configure this through the config files. In the main page of the QNK firmware, you will see that there are two ways to get started. The first one is the basic using the QNK Configurator, that was the, my previous video, and the second option is for advanced user using the source code. We go to the setup page and we are going to find that the first step is to download a software. Also, they are telling us that we need a text editor. And they recommend to use a plain text editor. You should avoid to use rich text formats text editors like Word. One recommendation that they do is to use Sublime Text or VS Code. I believe these are very heavy text editors just to edit some text files. In my case, I'm going to use this, Notepad++. It's a lightweight text editor. The next thing that we need to do is to download the QNK toolbox. In my previous video, I already showed you how to download and install it, so go ahead and see that video. Now we are going to prepare our built environment. In my case, I'm going to use Windows, so the first step that I need to do is to download this msys2 software here in the msys2 web page we are going to do the installation following the instructions that are here in the page the instructions are very easy to follow so let's go and do this step by step first of all i'm going to download the software and i'm going to execute it as you can see this is going to be our typical install of any software but in the page in the instructions you can see each instruction for each of the steps for installing this software. Once the installation is completed, I'm going to execute the software MSYS2. Please take into account that you need to execute the version for 64 bits. As you can see in this note, the 64 bit is different from the other version. This is the MSYS2 software, and we are going to execute the commands that are in the instructions. The first command is pacman-syu and we are going to wait until it finishes to update all the packages. If you see these prompt messages, you are going to select yes. When the installation is completed, the software is going to close and we need to execute it again. We are going to copy and paste the second command and we are going to wait the execution of this command. Once the execution is finished, we are going back to the QNK main page and we see that we need to execute this new command and for this we are going to copy and paste it in the MSYS2 software. Now, the third step is to run the QNK setup. We only need to copy this command and paste it in the MSYS2 software. When you see this prompt to copy all of the repository to our local folder we are going to say yes we want to copy all of it be careful with the error messages to test our build environment we need to compile one keyboard just to see if the software is correctly installed this is the local folder where the qnk software was installed inside of the keyboard folder we are going to look for the handwire folder and we look for our ductile manuform folder our keyboard is a 4x5 and inside this folder we are going to find all of the key maps created for this keyboard. We are going to edit the default key map. Let's drag and drop these two files into the notepad++. Inside this file you are going to see the same distribution that we see on the web page when we did the last configuration. To change the configuration, we only need to change the keys that are showing here, the KC underscore T, for example. But please be careful to not erase the commas. This commas is to separate each of the keys. As you can see here, there are the keys for raise and lower layers. In the raise layer, there are keys to move the mouse. And as you can see here, all these underscore lines is to represent the same triangle that we saw in the configurator. And it means that when you press these keys in each layer, you are going to be pressing the key in the base layer. The codes for the combo keys can be changed. For example, you see here shift and escape key as a combo key 
but this SFT underscore ESC doesn't exist in the standard QNK configurator, but we can define it up here. As you can see, this is the real code for this key. So it's like an alias. The second file is the config.h. In this file, you are going to define, for example, what time of co communication you want to use, serial or I2C. Our current keyboard uses serial, so this is why this is not uncommented. In this section, you can change the master half. In my case, I want to use the right side as the master half. Enhance means that each half can work independently of the other half. I'm going to remove these two lines and I'm going to add it in here just to comment this line. And now my keyboard is going to have the right side as the master one. This is my current key distribution. To find the best distribution for me, I had to do a lot of tests. So for example, I have to put my thumbs here to see which position was the best to change the layers, to find the keys, etc. For example, I can reach these four keys very easy with my thumb key. So I'm going to put in these keys the most common keys for me. This yellow keys represents the layer, so I'm going to use in my left hand the two layers because it feels more comfy for me. If you prefer other position, you can change it. One of my first changes was to change the backspace key because it was a combo key. But in my experience, when I tried to do backspace or the space key, the key combo key sometimes activate by itself, so I prefer to leave this key only for a space and backspace. In the raised layer, I left the numbers to use by the right hand, so I'm going to press the layer key with my left hand and I'm going to reach every number with my right hand, so it, it seems to be easy for me. In the lower layer, I left all the function keys to be reached with my left hand. And with my right hand, I'm going to use the insert, the home, the delete, the end, etc, etc, etc. Now, the codes for each key are in the main page of the QNK configurator. But you can also use the QNK configurator web page and see each of the codes. When you pass your mouse over each key, you are going to see down here each of the codes. So it's a little faster to do in this way. Another thing that I can do is to download this JSON file, open it the file and then copy the keys. For example, this combo key, I can copy it and use it in here. So I'm going to know which is the command for this combo key. And now we are going to compile our file. We are going to open the MSYS2 program and in the web page we are going to see how to compile. This is the command to compile the handwired document form 4x5 default key map. Now press enter and I have an error. I redo all the installation with all the comments again to see if everything was going to work as expected. It seems that in the previous installation there was something missing and I didn't check the errors. And now I'm going to execute the compile command again and it seems it working, it's working now. This command is going to take some time to execute so we must wait. In my previous video I already show you how to flash each of the microcontrollers. Basically we need to open the QNK toolbox, open the file and flash the microcontrollers. First of all we unplug the USB cable and then we can unplug the two halves. I'm going to connect the first half to the USB and I'm going to press the reset button. Immediately the software recognizes the keyboard and start flashing it. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the second half. I'm going to take the USB cable and I'm going to plug in in the second half. Once again, I'm going to press the reset button and the software is going to recognize it immediately and start flashing it. Once it's finished, I'm going to remove the auto flash option 
and I'm going to unplug the USB cable then I'm going to join the two halves with the curly cable and then I'm going to connect again the USB cable as you can see I'm going to use the right half as the master one and now I'm going to test my new keyboard well my new configuration because I already test my new keyboard in my previous video I already told you that these columns are inverted and I forget to make the change here I'm going to show you how to do it by software we need to open the 4x5.h config file this file describes the position of each one of the keys and how to transform to the columns and rows for the microcontroller as you can see here are the left keys for the uh, column and row of each one of the keys in my case the error is in these eight keys down here the only thing i need to do is to change the column so i'm going to erase these four i'm going to put a three here and instead of the three i'm going to put a four column here i'm going to do the, the same thing for the right side zero and one i'm going to invert the two and the one down here and the two and the three for the right hand this is only for the first part of the file because the file is divided in two parts depends on which hand is the master one so i'm going to do the same thing in the second part of this file i'm going to invert the four columns here and now my keyboard should work as i expected i'm going to save this file i'm going to compile again the files i'm going to wait for them and i'm going to flash my keyboards now i'm going to test my keyboard and the issue has disappeared the end and home keys are working perfectly i can test each layer and they are working perfectly i hope you like this video if you have any questions you can leave me a comment uh, please subscribe like the video and i hope to see you in the next one bye bye